Hello and welcome to the Awakened Feminine Podcast. I'm your host, Kaki Lee, a mindset coach and healer who's on a mission to share the love and wisdom of inspiring women from around the world who have gone through adversity and turned their pain into purpose. Today, I'm excited to be interviewing Lucy Chavez. She was an ex-active duty in the Air Force and she's turned an integrative nutrition health coach. And I know she has so much love and wisdom to share with us today. Do I have you there, Lucy? Hi, I'm here. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Awaken Feminine Podcast. I'm so excited to have you with us. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself to our listeners and viewers and where you're joining me from before we, you know, really dig deep into the interview? Yeah, so I'm currently located outside the Pittsburgh area. And um, <clears throat> just with regard to my background, as you mentioned, I was active duty in the Air Force for more than 13 years. Um, and I was experiencing a lot of chronic pain with a lot of uh, chronic health conditions, one of the main ones being fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. And I was on a lot of medications and I just was not getting better. So that led me to seek a more natural approach to healing. Mm -hmm. And um, through learning how to do that for myself, I decided that I wanted to share this with other people and help them do the same. That's awesome. So um, you're located in the USA, is that correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm in Australia, so I just want to make sure people know exactly where you are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Pennsylvania, USA. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Lucy, you said you know you you've um, experienced you know you've got fibromyalgia, and you you know gone through a lot of natural healing. So, and that's how you you know inspired you to become a health coach. So, was there a particular you know event or catalyst that really you know, got you going, I'm going to be a health coach. Um, you know, I'm going to transition into this new career. So uh, I think a lot of it was just seeing my own journey progress and, mm. and to a point where I could be, be more active again and, and just feel more alive every day. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's so many women out there suffering with this condition. And I had the same mindset that I can never get better. I can't feel this. Yeah. And when I figured out that it's possible through natural methods, there is no way that I could keep this to myself mm -hmm. and, and not learn how to help others do the same. Like, there's just no way. Yeah. I'm so passionate about, you know, guiding other women into feeling better. Yeah. Even with fibromyalgia. Yeah, I love that. And for those people who don't know what fibromyalgia is, can you please, you know, just give a little, you know, description of what it actually is and, you know, how it actually can affect you. Yeah, so the fibromyalgia can affect every part of your body. You can have deep muscle aches, you can have migraines, you can have digestive upset. Um, and that all just turns into depression and anxiety because to the person looking at you, physically, you look fine. You don't look yeah. ill. You look completely normal. And that was one of the stigmas that I had to deal with too, um, is people thinking that maybe I was faking it or is in my head. And uh, that's one of the parts that I want to help women overcome too, is just that mindset that you can't get better, that you, you know, you have to be on medications for the rest of your life. And that's not true. You can get better. You can feel better and, and live a more f fulfilling life for you and your loved ones. Yeah. That's awesome that, you know, you're able to heal yourself naturally and now doing that for other people as well. So I just want to unpack that journey a little bit. You know, you said you started the healing process. So how did it kind of all transpire? Like when did, how long have you had it? And what's the journey with you, you know, finding those natural methods and to heal that? Yeah. So um, my journey with chronic health conditions has probably been more than 20 years. Wow. And the, the fibromyalgia journey in particular, you know, you first start and you go to the doctor and you start telling them what's going on and they kind of tell you that oh it's in your head and you know you just need to relax and you know so it was kind of like this um and a lot of that well most of that occurred during my air force career which made it even more difficult yeah. um to keep up with my job and my duties um so after i was medically retired from the air force i actually um a friend of mine uh talked to me about functional medicine 
Um, I had never heard about that. I didn't know what it meant. Um, so I did some research and I found a doctor who essentially helped me use food as medicine. Yeah. He taught me how to do that. And, and I eventually got off all my medications. And um, so I just basically went from, you know, dealing with all that through my Air Force career, just being unable to get out of bed. And I just got tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. And I figured I'm, you know, I'm on 10, more than 10 prescriptions a day. Why not try something that is natural? That's not going to hurt me um, and see what happens. Yeah. And I'm so glad that I did. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm actually a pharmacist by trade. So oh, yeah. So, awesome. you know, I am moving away from that. So, you know, I see so many people you put on so many medications and sometimes it's, you know, you take this medication to counteract this, you know, this side effect. And it's just this piling on of all these medications, which actually you only had to take that particular one medication for to treat it, but everything else yeah. is to counteract side effects and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I was absolutely in that same boat as well. I know some of the medications that I were taking were to counteract the side effects of something else that I was taking yeah. that wasn't even helping me anyway. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's pretty staggering to, to realize that. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's so much, um, new, new, th I guess, new information coming out about, you know, how food can, eating the right foods can really help heal your body. Right. So it's awesome that you were able to find that. So was there, a moment there during your journey with fibromyalgia that you've had a like aha moment or a spiritual awakening which really kind of led you to this path of moving into the health coaching space i i would say it was a combination of um being in this dark place with this condition that was just debilitating mentally and physically and I, you know, I'm a single mom. Uh, I have a son who, you know, is pretty active with soccer. And I was finding it really hard to keep up with my full-time job, uh, taking care of him and, you know, just chores around the home. And I think it all, being in that dark space, I finally realized, like, it doesn't have to be like this. Like, there has to be a way to, to change this. And that moment was probably just, not being able to to show up for my son as much as I would like to. I was starting to miss some of his soccer games yeah. because I couldn't get out of bed or I had a migraine or, you know, and uh, I think it was a combination of all the, the physical pain and then the mental anguish of not being able to be there for my son that, that sparked this journey um, for me and wanting to seek a, a true healing, really. Um, yeah. not just from the physical pain but the mental stuff as well yeah and a lot of times when you have that physical pain you know sometimes it is a manifestation from the mental pain that you have as well so it's all interconnected um, yeah so having gone through everything that you know you've gone through what is your personal mission I know you've mentioned it before that you know you are so passionate about helping people but I want you to, you know, tell me what are you here on this earth to do? I really think that it is to deliver that message that our, our bodies are designed to naturally heal themselves mm -hmm. and that it's, it's what we take in, whether it be food or, you know, something on TV or a piece of news that becomes toxic to, you know, this system that is meant to function in a certain way. Uh, our bodies are not designed to process, you know, processed foods, uh, all the sugary cereals and drinks with added sugars. And the, our bodies are just not designed to, um, to handle all of that. So my mission is just to, to get that word out, that message that if you just pay attention to what you're eating and then how that makes you feel, then remove that and let's see how you do. It's, yeah. it's, it doesn't have to even be that complicated because there's so many other ways to you know, to substitute, you know, the unhealthy option for just something that's a little bit healthier yeah. that maybe doesn't taste as sweet, but that you can get used to. 
mm. you know, your because your body gets addicted to the sugary foods that um, that are put out there on TV and everywhere. And and we start so young too. We start as kids. You know, we don't realize yeah. that. And you know, our I know my mom didn't realize. Um, you know, so yeah. So just it, overall, my mission is just to help women heal fibromyalgia nat naturally and, and start showing up for their families and their, and their kids and them, and themselves really, yeah. you know, teach them about self-love and, and the belief that, that, that they can get better. Yeah. I love that. And it is all about self-love, isn't it? It all starts, yeah. from, it all starts from within and everything else just falls into place after that. So I love Absolutely. your mission. Thank you for, you know, being here to share that wisdom with people Thank so, you for having me. This is amazing. <laughs> oh no, I, I'm so glad that you're on with me. So Lucy, I want to go even more deep and personal with you. If you're happy right. about that. Yeah, sure. Let's do oh, it. <laughs> awesome. So can you share with us what's the greatest lesson that you've ever learned in your life? Hmm. That's a tough one. Um, I think for sure it's that I can't control, you know, everything around me. Mm -hmm. I can only control me and how I go about situations, how I react to things. Um, and, and that I'm responsible for, you know, where I'm at in my life, um, with be it my career, my health, everything else, you know, oftentimes we, we think it's an outside source. Something is causing us to not succeed and not, you know, do as well as we want to, but ultimately it's, it's our power, it's our life. And, and we have to believe in ourselves. And I think that all just comes from, you know, that, that journey to healing. I, I realized that I did this myself. I, I did all the work. Yes. The doctor, you know, told me what to do, but I basically did everything. Yeah. So it's just that empowerment that like we are responsible and, and, and it is possible yeah. to, to get on the other side of pain and be happier and healthier. Yeah, I love that. And it's so true. It is all, we can only control what we do. We can't control anything, you know, anyone else's thoughts or feelings or actions. Right. And you know, we're both coaches. So as coaches, it's also, we are there to support our clients so that they get the best results, but they need to do the work as well. They can't just expect things to magically happen if yeah. they don't do anything, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's just that it's, we're there to guide them and to teach and educate. But yeah, absolutely. The individual does the work. And I think through that work, it's a transformation. Mm. You know, they, you learn that, oh my God, I can do this by myself. I am strong enough. I am enough and I can get better. It's just, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And for me, like fine, having a coach is so important because I'm not saying that because I'm a coach and you're a coach, but yeah. for my healing journey, it's, it's made such a big difference. You can read all the books in the world, but if you have someone there to guide you, to support you, to be a cheerleader, to kick your ass when you're yeah. you know, not seeing yeah. the blind spots, it makes such a big difference. And the up-leveling and upgrading that you get is just phenomenal. Absolutely. I agree. I think, and most of us can't, you know, I don't think I would have been able to, to get to where I am without the guide of um, the functional medicine doctor. Yeah. Um, I mean, I tried and it just doesn't work. Coaches are, are super important right now. And um, there's so many people that, that just need that voice, that yeah. accountability person, like you can do this, this is what you need to do and let's do it together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I love that. So I know you said that the greatest lesson is um, not being able to control anyone else but yourself. So what were the experiences or experiences that, you know, led to you really learning that lesson? Was there, you know, something in particular that really made you go, shit, I need to really take control of my life because no one else can do that? Um, so one of the things that you experience a lot with fibromyalgia is isolation mm. um, because you start not being able to go on outings um, it, either because you're in pain or because you're sad and depressed. Um, so there's a lot of different levels of this condition that um, affect your, your life in general. And um, so 
in some of those moments, I just realized, you know, no one's going to come in here and drag me out of bed and, you know, make a healthy meal for me. Like, this is something that I have to, I just have to put my big girl pants on and do it myself. Yeah. And like, once I started going through that journey and I started seeing results and progress, I just felt so enlightened and like, this is, I mean, I could have been doing this all along, but without the help of a coach or, you know, someone who can guide you in that process, it's really difficult to do. Yeah. Love that. So having gone through everything that you've gone through in your journey, I know the old functional medicine doctor was functional foods med doctor was really helpful in your journey, but were there other tools or teachers that were really helpful in that healing process for you? Yeah. So one of the other things I did was I, I spent some time with, uh, in counseling. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was mostly just to work on my mindset and uh, overcome some of the trauma that was also keeping me stuck in that hole in that mindset that maybe I don't deserve to get better. Maybe this is what I deserve, you know, bad things to happen or for me not to feel well. And so unpacking all those things that led to to the disease or the condition that is crippling um is important um because you have to heal from the inside out Mm. it's well you know the healthy foods help um they help you physically feel better if inside mentally you're still not well you know it's all gonna crumple eventually so it's a multi-dimensional approach to healing um but it can be done naturally yeah I love that. Mind, body, and spirit. It's so important. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) I'm a book lover. So is there, you know, is there a particular book or even a few books that really changed your life? So one book right now that I've been, actually, I think I'm on my third time reading it. um, And it's called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Yes. Do you know who that is? Yes. Okay. I yeah, haven't read his so book amazing. yet, but I, I try to listen to his audio book, but that didn't quite work out. So I need to read his read. It. Yeah. So one of the things I do to sort of stay in that positive mindset um, is every morning I spend some time reading through the book. Um, and it kind of just helps remind me to stay in the moment, to not, you know, get focused on what happened a week ago or something that might might happen six months from now just to ground myself um and and again it reminds me that i can't control outside forces i can only control my reaction to it and how i process it um so that has been that book has been a game changer for me for sure i would recommend anybody to read that. yeah well you really inspire me to you know start reading it now (laughs) yeah 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 i just finished finished reading a book so i'm finding a book to read so I will read that book. I absolutely recommend that. Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. So Lucy, right now the world is in a interesting place at the moment. You can say that to say the Um, least. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of people navigating change and, you know, start also starting their awakening journey. There's a lot of people waking up to, you know, their life and things are happening in the world. So what advice or recommendations would you have for them to get rid of any limiting beliefs or fear that is holding them back from taking that step to, you know, go on that journey? Yeah, I think a lot of it does, you know, it's a personal choice and you have to get to that point within yourself where you are just tired of your situation. You're tired of, you know, not being able to wake up in the morning. You're tired of having to take sick leave because you can't make it to work or missing your kids, you know, soccer games or recitals. Um, And you have to take accountability. So you have to start figuring out, is this how I want to continue to live? Or do I want better for myself and for others? And it, it really, I mean, you really can't force someone who isn't ready to take that step and start that process. But I think I would advise folks to, you know, just think about what they want out of life and um, look around them and, and find either a mentor or a coach that can help them get to where they want to be. Yeah. Great advice. Yeah. Yeah. Great advice. And definitely, I think, 
taking responsibility is so important. Uh, a lot of a lot of people, I mean myself included, in the past was in the victim mode. You know, everything. Oh, Absolutely. why is this happening to me? It's not fair. Why does that person have it better? You know, all those thoughts, right? Yeah. And have, taking responsibility that well that person might have worked really hard to get to where they are. What have you been doing? You know, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, all sort of, all sorts of different things, but really taking accountability and responsibility for your own thoughts and actions. Right. Yeah. It yeah. has to start there for sure. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing that lovely yeah. advice. And I want to ask you, Lucy, if you could time travel and just go back to a younger version of yourself, what advice would you give yourself? Uh, yeah, the advice I would give myself would be to just love myself, like, and, and know that I matter and that, you know, no matter what others around me are saying or doing, I matter. And just to take that time to, to love myself deeply, which is one of the things I worked on through this whole process too. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Self love is so important. Thank you. That's great advice for your younger self and for anyone that's <laughs> listening as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a great segue to my next question because it's all about <laughs> self love, actually. All right. <laughs> so, awesome. You know, we, we've been talking about self love from the beginning, and you just shared that piece of advice for your younger self. So, you know, as a busy, as a busy mum and also an entrepreneur, what are your top three go-to activities to make sure that you give yourself that self-love? Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> I would say the first one is, um, making time for the gym. Um, I know it seems like, Oh, really the gym is self-love. Um, but for me, it's actually one of the most unique spaces to get self-love because you're working on yourself, uh, from the inside out, yeah. you know, when you start working out, you release those endorphins and you start feeling great. <clears throat> you're taking care of your cardiovascular system and you're building muscle. So that's one of my favorites to do when I'm able to, and physically well enough to do that. Um, I think the other thing that I do is, um, I like to spend quiet time. Um, every morning I take time to taste my coffee and be grateful for it and be yeah. grateful for that. Just that, that stillness, that peace. Yeah. Um, and then every once in a while, I try to treat myself to something nice, um, yes. of, you know, a purchase of something that maybe I've been wanting. I kind of, you know, will look back and be like, okay, I've been, you know, working on some goals lately. I'm doing good with my eating. And I think it is important to recognize, um, I learned recently that um, through some feedback I, that I don't give myself enough credit for the things I am doing. And I think it's absolutely true. Um, and I think that is a form of self-love when you yeah. recognize and you tell yourself, good job, good yeah. job for, you know, this past week you overcame, you know, that difficult uh, issue at work and you pushed through and, and then you still went to the gym and did all these things for yourself. Um, so yeah, I think just giving yourself credit and being grateful for the, all the things you're doing right, instead of always focusing on the negative. Yeah, I love that. And it is so important. I, Self-love was a big part of my journey as well. And the negative self-talk that you know, I think we're just conditioned to do to ourselves, it, it's not Absolutely. helpful. It's not helpful no. for you no. at no. all. So yeah. it's great that you, know, that you recognize that you need to give yourself a more you know self-love and less negative talk yeah that's yeah. great and there's no right or wrong way, way for self-love it's just whatever makes you feel good and feel that you're being taken care of right absolutely yep yeah oh well lucy i have loved our conversation today but before we wrap up can you share with us what it is that is setting your soul on fire right now so what is setting my soul on fire is getting my message out there and helping people. Yeah. Um, I want to eventually get to the point in my business where I'm, I'm helping people um, who can, you know, sign up for my program 
and, and then use some of that um, to facilitate free programs for people who can't afford it, yeah. um, whether it be a free class or just information. Um, that is what's lighting me up on fire right now and what's helping me continue to move forward. I love that. Such yeah. a beautiful way to do it, to be able to, you know, use what you use that to also provide a free service for people that can't, you know, afford it because everyone should be able to get as much help as they can. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So Lucy, thank you so much for sharing your love and wisdom with us today. If Thanks people want me. to find out more about you and how they can work with you, where should they go? So they can find me on my Instagram page. That's probably the easiest. And okay. that's, coach lucy.ig okay um, and they can comment on any of the posts or send me a direct message and we'll get started awesome. i'm excited yay i will i'll have all your details and any recommended resources we talked about available in the show notes so people can reach out to you thank you Perfect. so much again thank you for having me i this was amazing to get to see your beautiful face and, and, <laughs> oh, share, so good and, share, and share and such a great topic for everyone to hear and and hopefully get some insight out of it yeah i love that so awesome. thank you so much lucy until next Thanks. time i love Bye. you all i believe in you all and you are worth taking that first step to the life of your dreams